today on Mother Mayhem. Here's what's happening. Your financial situation, it was likely orchestrated largely by your mom and your brother to keep you exactly where you are, trapped in their bidding. They get to keep you in place so long as this current arrangement stands. They're weaponizing your financial dependence and using it to control you as they would any other narcissistic weapon. Welcome back to Mother Mayhem, the Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Podcast for Daughters. I'm your host, Heather Gray, and I'm so very glad you're here. Today, we're talking to Carrie, and for those of you following along with my pop culture journey, I will offer that Carrie comes from both Sex in the City and Homeland, two very different women, and I rather like that. Us women have a lot of sides to us, don't you think? We're not all one thing, and I like the idea of holding both. Two opposing things can always be true. Admittedly, I just picked the name because I liked the show and I liked the characters. And it was also just up next in the list when I made a list of names up to cover for people who were writing in. But as I reflect on the conversation that we're all about to have with Carrie, it does seem fitting. How do you set boundaries with a mother that you have financial ties with? How do you go no contact with someone who's connected to your housing? How do you do it when you're not the only one affected, but it also involves your daughter? Welcome, my friends, <laughs> to what we call a clusterfuck. We know we need boundaries, but how do we not screw ourselves over or our kids over in the process? How do we go about setting them? Let's listen to what Carrie has to say first, and then I'm going to find all of you on the other side. So she writes, thank you for your podcast so far. It's been so invaluable, a source of learning, and it's comforting to know that I now have a label for what's been going on in my life and how I ended up in the place that I am. When I listen to your show, it helps me formulate my questions and gives clarity to where I find myself. And I want to make lots of points and ask lots of questions. But here now, I feel the confusion again and the struggle to put into words what my life has become. I'm entangled with my family and in my narcissistic mother in such a financially messy way that I can't just get up and go. I also have a daughter that thinks my mom is really great. I've joined Facebook groups for daughters of narcissistic mothers that have gone into no contact with their parents, and I don't know if I can do this. I also know that I need to do this in order to protect my life and to be able to make some steps forward rather than the downward-looking spiral that I have been told my life is and that I have been led to by my narcissistic mother. I don't know why it took me so long to see or understand what my mom was doing to me, and I have guilt and shame around all of that and the fact that I still cannot break away from her. The house I currently live in is now owned by my brother, and it's a whole toxic world of guilt and shame that they have enforced on me and that I now live in, even though I'm 48. I have no independence from them and no easy way to get independence from them. It feels a little bit like financial abuse, although this would never stand up in court. Maybe the less contact I have, the way forward away from them would become clearer. But then what do I do about my daughter? She loves my mom and even tonight was saying how kind my brother is to her. Further to the way they treat me, they now treat her with kindness and further alienate me and make me look like the bad one. I'm not sure what to do. If I could sue them, I would. Thank you for your podcast. It's helping me enormously. All the topics and points you raise are right on the main hair tingling right. Oh, that's the best compliment. Thank you so much. Hair tingling right. I like it. I'm coming to see that there are all kinds of narcissistic mothers, but mine definitely drops into one of these categories. So now I just have to work out how I can break free. I feel like a prisoner trapped in her web. It's a lot like mental torture that most other people really can't see. Only I suffer from her abusive ways, and of course she herself thinks she's great. So again, thank you for your insight. It's incredibly revealing. Ah, oh, gosh. Carrie. There's so much pain in this. I want you to know that I hear it, I see it, and I believe you. 
everyone listening believes you too, because they know exactly what you're talking about. One of the women wrote into the show recently, and she said for her, this, this podcast was like a fire hose got turned on for her. And she could see all of it in living color, but so much so that it became overwhelming for her. And that's what I hear too in your letter, that you're overwhelmed. You mentioned that when you gave me permission to use this letter, you, gave, you let me know that you were in the UK. Well, one of the best lines I've ever heard, and one that I tend to use on repeat, is from Matthew Kimberly. He's like this sales expert in the UK, and he says, we don't get overwhelmed when we don't know what to do. We get overwhelmed when we don't know what to do next. And that's what I think might be going on for you. You, Carrie, you don't know what to do next. You see your mom and you see all the messiness she's creating and you don't see that way out. And it gets more complicated because they have a relationship with your daughter. You know that anything you do is going to affect her. Plus, your housing is tied to their satisfaction with you. They have the power to make you homeless if they so choose. But before I go any further in this, like, I also have to say, I have to be honest with you here. Answering this question makes me a little bit nervous because there's a lot that I don't know. And without knowing the specifics of this particular situation, I think it would be easy for my advice here to get misconstrued for it to not be helpful or even send you in the total opposite wrong direction. So I would like you here to take my advice with a grain of salt, like many grains of salt. Bring the salt shaker to the table. Please know that I don't assume that I know anything of what I'm talking about when it comes to things like taxes, legalese, the law. I'm just giving you the perspective from the words that you shared with me. And I hope that you can receive them in the spirit that I'm intending. I know that they may not be helpful here. I know, too, that they might not be what you need to hear. But I really do hope that I can offer you some helpful nuggets. First, I'm hoping that you were able to listen to last week's episode, because in that episode, I talked to Monica about the emotional manipulation she, that she was enduring because her mom was weaponizing her health, and she was doing that to keep Monica compliant. My point there was an important one, because here's what's happening. Your financial situation, it was likely orchestrated largely by your mom and your brother to keep you exactly where you are, trapped in their bidding. They get to keep you in place so long as this current arrangement stands. They're weaponizing your financial dependence and using it to control you as they would any other narcissistic weapon. I don't know any of the intricacies of this, whether or not it's actually true or not true that you can't sue them. But if that story is the story you're telling yourself, because they have convinced you of this. Well, I just know enough to know that people do get tied to mortgages because of narcissists. They get tied to debt because of narcissists. They get their savings tied up because of narcissists. All of this stuff is true. And I trust you. I know that this is messy. But also too, though, remember what I said about overwhelm. We just focus here on what you have to do next. And I have to be honest with you. Anytime a client comes to me with a story of being trapped, of having no way out, I always encourage getting a second opinion. I encourage people to seek out the experts for consultation on what their options might be. You very well might find that it's true that you have no options, and that the only way out is by walking away from financial security. But before you do, it's really good to check to make sure that it's true. And I have to tell you, if you're feeling resistant to this idea, I would understand that because I get a lot of resistance to this idea when I talk to people about hiring experts because they're expensive and sometimes that can bring on additional debt. I'm not actually even asking you to hire these people or continue with their services. But just getting a consultation on what your options might be, I honestly think that whatever the fee is for that, 
It's worth the peace of mind. These Facebook groups you're in, be really careful with where you're getting your messaging. Because again, in all honesty, I fucking hate groups that preach no contact as the only option. It's wildly irresponsible. It's not a trauma-informed response, even when it preaches itself to be, because financial abuse is abuse. And that financial pull and that need that they've created where you are financially dependent on the narcissist, that happens and that's real. And going no contact can be dangerous in that situation. One of the things I want to help you wrap your mind around here is I know you're feeling a lot of shame about this. And I know this all feels really bad. I get where you're at. This is actually one of the reasons why I fucking hate those Facebook groups. Because in the psychobabble world, there's this guy, Maslow. Oh, shoot. I don't even, I'm a bad therapist. I don't even know Maslow's first name. But he's this psychological development expert. And he talks about the hierarchy of needs. At the bottom of this needs pyramid is the physiological needs. Things we need to feel safe. Food, shelter, water. Next in line comes personal safety, financial security, employment, health, and property. Then, and only then, comes love and belonging for things like family and friendship. You can't address the needs of love and belonging and your emotional needs until your physical needs are met. So, Carrie, you're not at all failing yourself by staying where you're at. You are trying to figure out how to meet your basic needs and the needs of your daughter while being abusively financially entangled. If you can get outside eyes on this and really see all of your options, really, please, I encourage you to do that because there's absolutely no freaking way I'm going to know. But it's worth finding out. If not, we are going to focus on those basic needs you have before looking at how you manage the emotionally abusive narcissist in your life. If you can, and I, I know you're probably not used to hearing me say this, but I would mentally be putting your narcissistic people on ice for a second. We know they're narcissistic. We know they're abusive. There's not going to be anything new to see here. No amount of processing, no amount of insight is going to change that. We know they're narcissistic. They are going to do what narcissists do. They are going to act narcissistically, and they are going to try to emotionally manipulate you. For now, I think it's best that we just internally know that. You don't have to say it out loud to anyone else to prove your point. Now's not the time to give that part of your story energy. I believe you. This community of women around the world listening in, we believe you. And for now, we have to allow that to be enough because now it's time to figure out who you need to be and what you need to do to be able to get out. If it's money you need, you are going to have to figure that out. How do you get the money you need to leave? If leaving means walking away from substantial life savings, as it really sometimes is for some people, make sure an expert agrees with this. But then how do you learn to make peace with that? How do you learn to start wrapping your mind around what you might have to physically walk away from in order to not be abused, in order not to be emotionally manipulated, in order to feel safer in the world? It sounds like you're becoming more clear in knowing that you need to get out, but you're not sure how. And I think one of the ways to approach this, and it's super gross, <laughs> but picture you living in a house that's roach infested. If your mother and brother are the roaches, every time you try to diminish their presence, they come back harder. They get closer to you and they get closer to your kid. If your house was not physically safe for your daughter, what would you be doing differently? How would you be protecting her from the roaches? You are programmed into thinking you're trapped. 
You are programmed into thinking that the devil you know is better than the devil you don't, and you likely have been programmed to believe that you are incapable of anything without your mother and brother helping you. But what if you were wrong? What if that wasn't true? What if you started living and making decisions as if that wasn't true? What if you did know how to get your daughter out of a roach-infested apartment, but you were just scared to? How would you get out if this situation weren't tied to family? Sometimes we see all of this so differently because it's family. So what if it wasn't family? What would you do differently? And is there any way you can remind yourself that they actually aren't family? Because family doesn't treat people this way. Family doesn't hold people emotionally hostage. Is there a way that you're able to negotiate a release for yourself in your head if you shift your thinking? How does this shift or change or move if your landlord were a stranger? Because in situations like this, people are often living this way because their credit is shot. But if your credit isn't shot, could you maybe get a loan? Do you see new options for yourself if you picture the roaches or if you forget that this is all tied to family and tangled by relationships your daughter has with them? Because if I were you, I would just be focusing all of my energy on meeting the basic need, getting out from this financial entanglement, securing shelter for you and your daughter that isn't contingent on being emotionally abused. Let your mother and your brother be your mother and your brother. Don't engage with what they're doing. Don't give them energy. Put them mentally on ice while you work to secure housing for you and your daughter that's separate of them. Because you know this, as long as you are in proximity to them, you have to be a bit armored up. You have to be walled off. They're going to sense how you're trying to change because you'll change your patterned response to things. And that's going to mean that they're going to end up turning the heat on you. And so you can't engage with them. Any spare energy or any spare amount of time you have has to go towards securing the funds you need to get out, not trying to navigate this relationship with them. So I would be armoring up, I would be walling off, and I would be disconnecting from them as much as possible until you can get out. You don't want to give them your vulnerability, but also you don't want to engage in conflict. You're just going to focus on getting out. Who do you need to be in order to get out? And you work on being her a little bit more every day. Because once you're out from under their thumb and independent, then you can work on healing and recovery. It is really hard to focus on PTSD and trauma when you're still at the scene of the crime, my friend. And it's not post-traumatic stress when it's still in the present. Once you're out, then you can engage in age-appropriate language for your daughter about why you moved out and why your relationship with your family is changing. There are a lot of ways to talk to her about that and to have that conversation, regardless of how old your daughter is. But we want to get you focusing on the steps. If your place burned down tomorrow, what would you do? If there was mold on the walls that was making your daughter sick, what would you do? I have no clue whether or not you should go no contact with these people, but there is no way you are going to know that until you are on your own two feet and independent of them. The shame and the guilt that you're experiencing, it's going to lift as soon as you start saving yourself. It's hard not to feel shame and guilt when you're like still in the web that you've been caught in. So we need you to armor up. We need you to wall off and we need you to stay private. You gotta get you and your kid out. Then you can get on with the business of healing. So if you're finding that your shame or your anxiety or depression from all of this 
are so debilitating that it's getting in the way of you being able to move or getting in the way of you being able to get support, you might have to find that in-person therapist. Find someone that you can lean on. You have been going at it alone for so long, and I'm really sure it's hard to see your way out. I'm so sorry for all that you're dealing with. And as for your daughter, I got to be honest with you here. The kids are always all right so long as the parents are working on being all right with themselves too. The rest will sort itself out. You have women all over the world whose biggest sensitivities are being weaponized against them, just like yours is for you. They know what it's like, and they're in it with you too. I am too. I know these things are messy. I know these things are tricky. We always want to secure our most basic needs first, because if our basic needs aren't met or we don't feel safe, we're largely incapable of doing anything else. That's why I put the focus on that for this episode. Next week, I'm tackling a listener question. We're going to be talking to Wendy, and she is wondering how you trust your gut after a lifetime of questioning yourself. And for those of you keeping track of my TV viewing habits, that's Wendy from Billions. <laughs> In another life, I would have killed to be her and have that job. She's such a ball buster, and she has so much confidence. So we're going to be helping Wendy find hers. You're all in this together from all over the world, and I'm in it with you too. Bye for now. I'm so grateful that you're here. You're right where you're supposed to be. At its heart, I'm hoping to use this show to build a community of women working together to heal from childhoods marked by maternal narcissism and emotional neglect. My goal for Mother Mayhem is that this show becomes an advice and mentoring-driven show where you share your questions, struggles, and stories, and I offer you direction for healing and recovery. That can't happen without your contributions. I invite you to send a recorded voice memo or write in an email with your questions and things you're struggling with. You can always find me over at heather at daughtersnpd.com. To connect further, I invite you to find me over at Instagram and occasionally on TikTok at daughtersnpd. If you know another woman who needs this conversation in her life, I'm going to ask that you share the show with her. You can help me get the word out with your reviews and social shares of the show and I hope you'll consider doing so. Special thanks to Heather Clark for editing this show. She's in my head and knows what I meant to say when the words come out backwards. Thanks for your time today. I'm always in it with you. Bye for now.